Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. This is episode five of five on our series on psychedelic drugs. If it's the first time you've tuned into Test Tube Plus, we take a big topic and we break it into five chunks so we can all understand it a bit better. Just a reminder, guys, we're talking about pretty heavy stuff, psychedelic drugs today. We're not condoning their use. We're just talking about them scientifically, as rationally as we can. So let's get started. So we've just spent four episodes talking about drugs that you can take to induce hallucinogenic effects. But you don't have to take drugs. You can actually do these things without those as well. For example, exercise. I know it sounds silly, but exercise and also sex release endorphins. Endorphins are a neurochemical, literally called endorphins because it means endogenous morphine. Morphine. They have an opiate-like effect on the brain. And they're naturally occurring in your body. They happen when things are going well, when you feel really good. It also can happen though during exercise when your muscles aren't getting enough oxygen. During anaerobic exercise, you get a runner's high because your body releases endorphins to try and make sure that you don't hurt yourself and that you're not feeling any pain. It's an analgesic effect. And this opiate-like effect makes you feel really good. You get this, again, runner's high. I mean, but of course, you can't exactly exercise constantly or you know, have sex constantly. I mean, you can try, but it doesn't necessarily work. So there are other ways to have this like natural high. So Timothy Leary, a guy you might have heard of, the phrase uh, turn on, tune in, drop out. He was a big proponent of LSD in the 60s. He was a psychologist at Harvard. He was actually fired in 63 because he maybe gave a student some LSD, not in the lab, but off campus. And he's a big spokesperson for the hippie drug culture. And in his latest book, Chaos and Cyberculture, he talks about where they are now, because LSD was cool, but we're talking, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And he's saying that the PC is the LSD of now, but specifically as it relates to virtual reality. Because think about it, you can create a whole world right there, covering all of your major senses and creating this experience, and you can do it where you put it on, take it off. That's insane. Albert Rizzo, who directs medical VR programs, he helps treat PTSD individuals using this technology, similar to how you can use drugs to treat depression and dealing with death, which is insane. There's a quote here that says, you can build virtual environments with optical illusions and mess with people's perceptual systems and make it look like a hallucinogenic experience. I mean, that sounds like somebody who's taken shrooms, but in reality, they're just wearing a VR headset and it can be used to tap into this subconscious part of your brain. Studies have also found that exposure to bright light can release uh, serotonin and even just thinking about being happy and literally thinking you're being happy will release more serotonin in your brain. Again, all of these things don't necessarily produce the same high as something like LSD, but this one does. Have you heard of sensory deprivation? When you're in a concert and you're overstimulated, you're actually creating a problem of overload, not deprivation. But our brains are built to be social. We're built to interact with other brains. And when you deprive the brain of that stimulation, it kind of goes crazy. In the 1950s at McGill University, they talked about sensory deprivation. And they said, when you put somebody in a room with really loud white noise and bright lights, it will cause sensory deprivation. People disagreed. They said that was overstimulation. Sensory deprivation takes all of the senses that you experience the world with and closes them off, flicks them off one by one. Usually, sensory deprivation works like this. The subject is submerged in a tank of very salty water so that there is a high level of buoyancy. So you don't feel gravity. There's one sense down. It's dark in there, so you can't see. There's another sense down. You obviously can't hear either. There's a third. And they slowly tick away at all of these senses. The water in the tank is kept at 93 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, which is a temperature that your skin can't actually feel where the water starts and your skin ends. And the reason it can't is because your skin can't feel wet. You'd know that if you were a subscriber, so make sure you subscribe. We talked about it when we were talking about senses not long ago. A typical float in a sensory deprivation tank lasts one and a half hours. And what happens when you get in there, as described in Discovery Magazine, is almost immediately after settling in the warm womb-like tank, one of the senses disintegrated. 
my body orientation. The vestibular system in the inner ear contributes to the sense of spatial orientation. And together, without proprioception, that is, the sense of where your arms are in comparison to the rest of your body, you can't tell what's happening. It's almost like you're a floating brain. And in this case, this person felt that without external cues, their body was spinning, even though they weren't actually spinning, and they got a wave of nausea. But you also can have your brain create its own reality. When it can't feel itself and it doesn't know where it is and you just kind of feel like a brain floating there, your brain looks inward to try and find stimulation. Our brains are gluttons for stimulation and when it doesn't have it, it will create it for itself. You'll see colors and sounds, hear voices and find stories. It's almost like waking dreams. And I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like psychedelics. So if you're worried about LSD, go find yourself a sensory deprivation tank. You might be able to get the same experience. Thanks for watching our five-part series on psychedelics. Hopefully you understand what they do to you a little better. If you missed any of our episodes this week on psychedelics, again, this is episode five of five. Click below and you can watch all of them. They're all pretty good. If you wanna talk about them down in the comments, I'll be down there with you. Make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus so that you get all of our videos. We do them every day of the week now. And if you have any suggestions for future topics, make sure that you tell us down in the comments as well. Or you can come tell me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez or tell the show at Test Tube. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>